So today we'll be going over transverse shear stress. Now, we're all familiar with the shear stress formula, which is equivalent to that shear force divided by the cross-sectional area. Now, in this case, one thing to remember that is that this is an approximation or an average shear stress. However, the actual shear stress formula is a bit different. Let me go ahead and draw a beam here. So for this beam at the cross section, we're seeing that shear force downward at this beam. Now when it comes to a shear stress, the way it's actually distributed within the cross section, it actually looks a little bit more like this. So we see within this cross section, and it, you can also see the neutral axis here drawn up, we see that the shear stress is actually the least at the top and bottom. However, at the center, this is where you actually experience the maximum shear stress. So the shear maximum is actually experienced at the neutral axis of the cross section, and it decreases the further away you go from the neutral axis. So this is what we call transverse shear stress. When we see that the shear stress is um, distributed along the cross section here. So it, um, the average shear stress that we've always calculated previously is a close approximation for it. However, this is what we refer to as the transverse shear stress. Now, if you were to go ahead and get an uh, element where the shear stress is developed within a small portion of this and you drew it up let's say over here now one thing you'll notice not only will you have this transverse shear stress here you will also have what's called a longitudinal shear stress and this can actually be easily explained if you had a beam in bending let's go ahead and draw that so when it comes to having a beam and bending, you usually have an external load being applied and that causes this deformation here. Now when you have a solid beam, this is usually how the deformation looks. Of course, I'm drawing it exaggerated here, but let's say that this wasn't one solid beam and let's say we have a bunch of um, smaller pieces, one on top of the next, and each one would be experiencing this bending due to that external load. So if we have like multiple of these planks, one on top of each other, it wouldn't actually deform like this. It would actually look from one of the corners a little bit different. So let me go ahead and just draw this corner here. So looking a little bit more closely at these planks or boards, one on top of each other, experiencing bending due to the external load, we see that these boards actually want to slip against each other. So you'll have shear stresses being developed. They want to slide at each of the interfaces. They want to slide at opposite directions here but since we're we usually have a single solid beam this does not occur they don't actually physically slide along these planes because it's only one solid piece so this is where you have that longitudinal shear stress being developed within the material itself so seeing this from this perspective when you have a beam and bending this starts making a little bit more sense why you develop the transverse shear stress across the cross section as well as along the longitudinal axis. So ultimately here is the formula that we're going to be using. This is known as the shear formula and when it comes to solving for either the transverse shear stress or the longitudinal shear stress there are actually equivalent. So you use the same formula to solve for either or and we have the shear stress is equal to the shear force times this q which i'll explain in a bit what this represents divided by the second moment of inertia or the moment of area times the thickness of the cross section itself so to explain a little bit further on the the variable q here what it represents let's say we have a rectangular rectangular cross section with the dimensions b for the base and the height is h here now let's say we want to solve the maximum shear stress well we know the maximum shear stress occurs at the neutral axis so in this case since we know that the shear stresses are distributed in a way such that 
the closer you get to the neutral axis, the greater the shear stress. So in this case, you actually would have to get your cross-section area of this whole area kind of, in a way, integrating, right, to get the maximum shear stress. So the variable Q here is equal to the cross-sectional area times Y bar. And in this case, Y bar would be the centroid of the cross-sectional area from the neutral axis. This would be Y bar. So this is another thing to keep in mind when solving the, for the transverse shear stress or the longitudinal shear stress. Now let's say, for example, you're trying to solve for the, the transverse shear stress of from at this point here. Um, Keep in mind, you could either do the top or the bottom. It's going to be the same when it comes to a shear, uh, symmetric um, cross-section. Let's say you're looking for the shear stress at this point here. Well, what you're going to be doing is your cross-sectional area that you're accounting for is for this bottom portion here, and your centroid would be from the neutral axis all the way to that cross-sectional area there. So let's go ahead and solve for the maximum shear stress of a simple rectangular cross-sectional area and let's keep everything in variable form. So for this one we're supposed to solve for the maximum shear stress developed along this cross section and we know the maximum shear stress developed is at the neutral axis so either we go ahead for the Q in particularly Q is equal to a cross section area times Y bar. Since we know the maximum shear stress occurs in the neutral axis, we're actually going to be looking at either the top or the bottom cross section. Since this is symmetric, it doesn't really matter. So the cross sectional area is the base times the height divided by 2 here. Keep in mind we're dealing with the, here's the Y bar here from the centroid of this area here. So we're only accounting for the cro the area from the neutral axis all the way to the top portion of it. This is the cross-sectional area we're accounting for. And then times the y bar in this case is h divided by 4 just by geometry. And so this gives us a q of b, the base times height squared divided by 8. Now for the thickness of this, and you, we could very easily tell the thickness of this is equivalent to the base. And the moment of second moment of inertia, the moment of area is equivalent to base h cubed divided by 12. So just plugging into the transverse shear formula, which is the internal shear times q divided by it, we could go ahead and plug in all these variables here and let's see what we come up with. So a couple things here, <clears throat> we could actually simplify a bit and do some, cancel out some variables. We have base on the top, base on the bottom, we have um, height squared and we have height cubed. So this is just gonna be a h. And so th finally, this gives us 3 halves times the shear force divided by the cross-sectional area of the rectangle. And so this is the maximum shear stress developed for a rectangular cross-section. So this is how you solve for the transverse shear stress. I believe the only confusing part is solving for the Q here. But once you get enough practice, you start understanding what you need to look for and whatnot. And so this is how you solve for the transverse shear stress, which is also equivalent to the longitudinal shear stress.